All right, so uh, now we're going to talk about uh, surface and how to start to get some patterning on the surface. So you might uh, notice that when you get into the materials and you start to assign them, uh, each material has a certain, let's just go to precast, has a possibility of having the surface pattern. Uh, Many of you probably have already noticed uh, some kind of a sand pattern uh, that comes with your concrete. And when you use this, um, here I'll try to go to a level that might show this off. So when you use that, uh, you see this kind of obnoxious sand uh, show up for everything that's concrete. I mean, there, there is a point to having this at some level, but for just architectural drawings that I'm asking for, I want you to get rid of it. But you might think about how you might leverage a pattern to start to delineate uh, other ideas of design. So let's just go into that. Um, so I'm going to use the precast that's on this floor. I'm going to change this pattern to a, um, a cross-edge pattern. Actually, if I don't use any of these drafting uh, patterns, I'm going to use a model pattern. And uh, you should have a pattern such as the 4-inch tile. So let's just see what that does. So I'm going to apply it. Go ahead and zoom in. As we get closer, we start to see that there's this four-inch pattern. Okay, a little dense, or a lot dense for kind of this big space. So let's go edit that. And what you can do is you can edit or you can duplicate. Uh, I've already duplicated it several times, but let's just go ahead and edit. And you can see that you have control over its spacing you have control over where it's parallel lines or a crosshatch and uh, even an angle if you wanted to do that. So I'm just going to cancel this and then I'll just open up um, some other uh, patterns I've already created. Now with mine I have uh, every 35 feet I have a column and every 20 feet I have a column. So in, in the 35 feet apart and then the bay is 20 feet wide. So this is the pattern that I want to start seeing is I'm going to kind of use it to delineate maybe a, um, a control joint that would be in the concrete and so that's going to be there and I'll go ahead and apply that now mine turned into kind of a perfect uh, pattern um, I'm going to kind of fool with it and actually make it wrong uh, if you tab through the selection, you'll get to a line. So you might have a kind of a misalignment, such as this uh, may have shown up for you when you try to get these kind of perfect tiling. Um, and the other possibility would be that there, it's just not in the right orientation. So you may have had something like this, where my 17.6 is going in this direction, my 20 foot's in this direction. So I'll just kind of correct that. I'm just going to use the rotate command. I'm going to select one of the lines, and I'm just going to rotate. And that will essentially rotate the entire pattern. And then you're just going to, there's no, uh, I haven't figured out a kind of a, a really clear way of finessing this. But as soon as you grab it and you see this dashed line, it means that you're going to move that pattern over. And then you're just going to use your best kind of guesstimate to get it aligned. And you see I'm getting close. As I zoom in, I can start to get dial in a little bit closer. So that looks pretty good there. And then I'll tab through and I'll grab this one. And I'll try to get it right about there. It's really close. And you have to drag it so so you see the dash. If you immediately grab it, you won't see anything until you've pulled it far enough that you see the dash line. Then you can come back and get into that kind of fine tuning. All right. So so we can see that now we have a pattern that is in alignment with the architectural idea. 
and and that's that's going to really bode well because if we go back to the view that we started in suddenly now I have a pattern here on the floor and I have a pattern up here and in this curvilinear form if it's just going to be rendered with light and material you may kind of lose the aspect that it's it's this curved form so these lines actually do a great job of delineating that surface uh, other things that you can start to do um, is you might want to do a little bit of editing uh, within here so we can see this seam on my columns well again uh, as I've done in uh, some of the past um, videos I'm just going to go in to modify I'm going to click on the line work I'm going to go to invisible and then I'm just going to click through these seams until they go away there's a little bit of uh, extra line here. I'm just going to have to deal with that and uh, get rid of it in Illustrator. But I've gotten rid of all the seams, so there's no seams there. But you might notice that, well, it might be really nice to uh, have these surfaces also delineated. So uh, I've already applied, uh, let me go check, but I've already applied uh, an material to the exhibit space and columns is called this tile porcelain and so I'm just going to click in it uh, and I'm going to give it a pattern again I'm going to go to model and let's see um, maybe this 12 inch pattern uh, would be about right so I'm going to just going to click on that if you look at what I've edited, it's just a one foot pattern, so that's great. Uh, and I'll say OK. And then there it is. You might find that uh, the pattern does not show up immediately uh, for you on especially uh, objects that you've imported uh, from Rhino. If that is the case, uh, under modify you're going to see this remove and paint uh, toolbar and you can click on the material that you had already chosen uh, for whatever object and then you can paint it on and it will show up at that point for some reason the Revit doesn't kind of automatically uh, apply these uh, s surface patterns uh, occasionally so that will just paint it on. Now I've got no problem, it's already there so I won't do that uh, but you might look into that. And the beautiful part about this this pattern is that not only um, does it show up here but when you would export the PDF uh, turning off transparency and shadow uh, it will export these as lines. So what I have you might want to make sure is that uh, that pattern is is a different color than any other color so you can select it all in Illustrator and, and uh, get it to the proper kind of scale or, or tone that you want so this is another way of customizing uh, your model um, and adding that kind of other layer of information